Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you'll probably not realise that I talk about a lot of different things. Um, so by you clicking on this particular channel or this particular video, it means you probably have some interest in what is happening to our young men. Now, why am I doing this video? Um, I'm doing this video basically because a lot of parents might not know that their children as young as 13 years old could be on a criminal database. Well, a gang's matrix. I'm going to show you a video that someone sent me this morning. Um, and I think it's important to know that. And why would the police have a gang's matrix with over 3,000 names on it? 78% of those are black boys aged between 24 and under. The youngest is 13. 55 of them are under 16 years of age. Now, there's no way that the parents can actually know that they're on that gang that matrix. It's called a gang matrix. It's in London. The only way you can get off it is if to move out of the area or there's a long procedure to get your, to get your child or your brother or your sibling or your son off of the matrix. The thing is, is that a lot of the matrix or the information gathered on the matrix is based on predictive policing. What do I mean by predictive policing? Predictive policing is where the police predict whether your son, well, let's just say young black men, are likely to commit a crime, are likely to be in a gang. They can be likely to be in a gang because they're waiting outside someone's house. They could be waiting for another gang member to come out of the house. If they're living in a deprived neighbourhood, they're likely to commit a crime because it is assumed that their parents can't afford to feed them. So it's more likely for them to either steal or kill in order to get money. And it's likely for them to commit a crime based on a number of things that the police have in their head, like they're black, they're young, they wear certain clothes, there's more than two or three of them. All of those things come under predictive policing that sends out a message, yes, these young men are more likely to commit a crime or more likely to be in a gang. So therefore, let's put them on the gang matrix. The thing is with the gang matrix is that it's got, it's, it's kind, it's graded, what they call rag rated. R rag rated is R-A-G, red for, red, red for high risk, I would assume, amber, and then you have green for low risk. Um, on the um, on the red, we'd have people actually involved in crime activity, found with um, weapons, that kind of thing. On amber, it could be um, because of association, they're associated with gang members, um, they, their social media activity, um, by associate, did I say by association? I think that I said by association. Um, let me tell you the amber. At risk of victimization. So there's nothing, they haven't done anything wrong, but actually they could be a victim of gang crime, victim of gang crimes. Uh, they could have been suggested by a third party. A third party may be somebody who knows them. Um, that could be anybody from a school or a job centre, anybody within their multi-agency network could suggest that they go on the gang matrix. Um, if they're green, they could have been a victim of gang violence, which means not necessarily, I don't know if that would fall under green or amber, because if they're a victim of grand, um, gang violence, the police may assume that they are involved in gangs. That's why they have become a victim. 
So they could fall under the amber, they might even fall under the red, I don't know. There's no kind of distinction between who is a perpetrator and who is a victim under this gang matrix. You can be a victim, that means you've had no criminal um, history at all, and you can still be on the gang matrix. That's the scary thing. And the gang matrix affects your child's life. It affects their jobs. It affects their, um, their schools. Because all of these institutions are informed that your child or your son or your sibling is on the gang matrix. The school will check, job centre will check, housing will check. And all the opportunities, all the doors are closed. And you might be wondering, look, you know, my son's been going for all these jobs. How come he's not getting them? How come he's not being accepted at any of these colleges or university? How comes? And he's a bright boy. He could be on the gang matrix. We don't know. How do you find out? It's a, all I've heard is that it is difficult. How do you get removed? I found out it is difficult. You literally have to move out of London to get off the London gangs matrix. Every kind, every police unit in the area have their own gangs matrix. Um, and look, with the green, it could be Twitter, social media, but that could also cut across um, all three colours, depending on what your child is putting on social media. And um, how do they define a gang? Well, like I said, colour, age, area, type of music. Do they listen to rap music? And um, it's very interesting because um, you have people who talk to you. And ordinarily, I'm kind of quite responsive. I kind of, I'm quite reactionary. Somebody asks me a question and I immediately respond. But recently I made an inquiry to get something done. And this person said, so how long have you lived here? And I'm thinking, why are you asking me that? And I started questioning. So do you enjoy your job? Ordinarily, the old lawyer would have said, oh yeah, I love being a administrator. I love doing this. I, I didn't volunteer anything. I just said yes. Because I realize how people gather information and how you can volunteer information without realising you're setting up a profile for that person. So, you know, it was when I'm thinking about how the police and all these um, government institutions gather information, especially with young people who are quite naive and trusting, they, do know, they don't know what information they are giving away. They ask you, oh, so do you live at home with your mum and dad then? you live at home with your parents? Oh, yeah, no, I only live with my mum. My dad left us ages ago and my dad, you know, is in jail. Or my dad, you know, don't see my dad at all. I haven't seen my dad since I was born. What image is that child creating for the person asking those questions? What image? So are you doing well in school? Oh no, I keep getting expelled. I'm, you know, I'm the bottom of the class. You know, got no friends. Oh, all my friends, oh, you know, I've got a lot of people, but they keep bullying me. You know, my mates, you know, they like me. You know, they, 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 they get in trouble at school as well. I get in trouble. I get in trouble a lot. It's not my fault, but I get in trouble a lot. Already they're creating a picture. They're creating a profile. And these poor young people that go out into the world and who have not been informed because their parents may not know what is out there. You know, parents have got enough to worry about knife crime. Thank God we don't hear so much about it. But knife crime, you know, whether or not their kids are going to get run over, whether or not their kids are going to get kidnapped, whether or not their kids, anything. There's so much to worry about. When I was young, the only thing our parents used to say was, don't talk to strangers. 
you know, that's all. And that stranger could mean anything. And it doesn't even make sense because, you know, the lollipop man is a stranger. People, teachers are strangers. And people in banks, they're strangers. So um, that wasn't even. But they didn't have to worry about whether or not a profile, especially if you have boys in your home, you didn't have to worry or not whether your child was being profiled behind your back. You know, the police, I hear, are going as far as to set up fake profiles on Facebook and befriending young black men to find out what they are doing. And the thing is, when people are on Facebook, the more friends they have, the more popular they seem. So they don't check the background of people who are asking to be their friends. They just... Um, they just accept friends, accept friends. They don't even know. They don't go and check anything about that friend. They don't know if that person is setting them up. I mean, it's funny with my subscribers. I don't have an opportunity to check out my subscribers. They just add on. They could be anybody. I could have the police on here. I could have immigration on here. I could have anybody on here. You know what I mean? There's no way anybody can attach themselves to anybody's profile and find out enough about that person to build a picture. And that is what the police do. And the, But the sad thing is, is that they use that information that they have and predict the behaviour of the child. And that is the sad thing because not all black children who are in single parent homes are going to be victims of are going to be perpetrators of crime not all young black boys who live in deprived neighborhoods are going to be um, perpetrators of crime just because a young black boy is waiting outside a friend's home doesn't mean he's a perpetrator of crime. Just because you see two or three black boys talking together doesn't mean that they are gang members. But that is how the police, the racial profiling, build up a picture. And that goes into their little database and that child's future is the child doesn't have a future because he's got all these crosses against his name and he doesn't even know why. He doesn't know why he's being rejected. He doesn't know why he is um, not getting, you know, being accepted in schools or colleges or universities. Doesn't know why he can't get a council flat if that is his, if that is his, um, purpose you know he meets somebody him and that lady um young lady if he's under 24 they they go and seek to get a home maybe a council home because they've got kids i don't know but they could be turned down just because he's on that gang matrix even though he himself has not committed a crime and has no involvement in any criminal activity so it's good to know that these systems are out there you probably, many of you probably know and are aware, but I've been blabbing on. I haven't even shown you the video, have I? It's just um, somebody talking, but yeah, you'll gather what I'm talking about, hopefully. Matrix is a secret police database containing the personal details of those the police consider to be in a gang. Those on the Matrix are put into one of three categories, red, amber or green. These categories determine how individuals are policed and treated by the state institutions. The gang's matrix was created by Boris Johnson during his time as the Mayor of London. It was a politicised response to the 2011 riots to embody the tough on crime policies put forward by David Cameron. The personal information of those on the Matrix and their label as a gang member is often shared with other institutions, such as the DDLA, the local authority, schools and housing associations. The sharing of information makes it increasingly difficult and sometimes impossible for individuals to access state services such as housing, education and benefits. It can even evoke immigration action. You can be put on this database for a number of reasons, such as being involved in what the police consider gang activity, being seen or friends with individuals the police consider dangerous, or even being a victim of crime.
Other reasons include social media activity, such as Twitter posts and YouTube videos. Third-party institutions, such as housing associations, pupil referral units and community services, can also suggest that individuals should be put on the matrix. The makeup of the matrix is as follows. 80% are 12 to 24 year olds, 78% are black males, 75% have been victims of violence, 64% are ranked as green or low risk, and finally, 35% have never been convicted of a serious offence. So, when I got that, I thought, well, never heard of that before. So let me Google it, so I'll put the links below, so you know it's not just a voice that's speaking behind a screen with no identity and no support information. So yeah, I'll definitely, even the Met Police, I found their link as well, so I'll upload that so you can have a look exactly and draw your own conclusions. Um, so it was launched by the Metropolitan Police in 2012 and it came out of the London riots in 2011 um, and all the suspected gang members were put onto the database whether they were suspected and actual gang members. It was used as a risk management tool to prevent serious violence but it's deemed unfit for purpose because of the way it is used. Police claim that if you fail to change um, they will come down hard on the victim, um, so-called gang members. But the thing is, is that also with this predictive policing, the notion is, is that if you've committed a crime once, you're going to commit a crime again. So even though they claim that this is, or for those who turn around, um, they will get taken off of the database if they have the belief that everybody who's going to commit a crime is going to reoffend. You'll never get off of that database, and you'll always be a victim of their um, of the way they look at things and the way they view criminals. There, there is no rehabilitation once you have offended once. You might think there is, but there isn't. Not in the eyes of the police. Um, you'll always be considered all oh, likely to reoffend, and that is one of their predictive policing um, policies. Boris Johnson said, "Go straight or go straight to jail." But what is straight? Half of the people on that system have never committed a crime. I think they said. I forget what the large proportion was, were victims of a crime. They hadn't committed, uh, they hadn't been involved in gang violence themselves, but they were actually victims of gang violence. So when they're saying go straight or go straight to jail, what is their definition? If you're already on this system, you, you can't go straight because that has already made you bent. The system is making young black boys bent and I forgive the pun on the word but that is what it is doing so there is no way for them to go straight um, let me see it's a racially discriminatory system that stigmatizes young black men according to Amnesty Org UK 30 professionals use the Met Gangs matrix to make decisions that will affect those registered on its uh, th those registered on it and it affects their lives especially when they're not guilty can you imagine dwp no benefits if it comes to that and the thing is is that people are saying oh everybody's on benefits but the way this country is going all these shops closing down then you've got coronavirus affecting businesses and closing down so anybody could be on DOWP, anybody can be on universal credit. So it's not about stigmatising. When we talk about benefits, they're all saying, oh, yeah, the immigrants are taking benefits. It's, I'm not talking about the people who have been sponging off the DWP system for goodness knows when. And the majority of them are not immigrants. But 
if they did need to go to the DWP, if they're on that matrix, that's going to restrict any kind of benefits, schooling, like they said, housing, everything. And the thing is, when they're on the matrix, the people aren't going to, the DWP is not going to say, oh, were you a victim or were you perpetrator? No, your name is on, your name is on that matrix. Therefore, you're screwed. You're screwed from the get go. But that's why, as you see, blacks are disproportionately represented on that matrix. I've already ranked, I've already told you what the red, amber, and green is. I've already mentioned the predictive policing based on assumptions, and it is based on assumptions. Predictive policing is a what if scenario. So they've committed again. What are the likely? What's the likelihood of them of them reoffending? Given that they live in this area, given that they are black, given that they're young, um, given that. They, um, they've been expelled from school, given that they, ha they come from a one-parent family. What are, is the likelihood of them offending or re-offending? That is how pred predictive policing works. As of October 2017, 3,806 were on the matrix. 17, that's like three years ago. Goodness knows how many is on it now. 78% were black. One was stopped for standing outside a friend's house. He was aged 11 years old. They went back when he was 14 and charged him. They arrested him and then let him go with no um, charges and no follow-up action. But the fact of the matter is, they've taken that 11 year old, they've put his name down, they've gone back at age 14, still can't find nothing, but his name is on the system. He's been criminalized. All these 3,008, um, these 3,806 children, young boys, some of the 55 of them under 16 have been criminalized already. They already have a record. And if their parents, I mean, if these children um, are children of parents, whether they're documented or undocumented, they can be evicted. Did you know that the police can evict parents of gang members from their homes? I wonder if you knew that. Apparently, the police wrote a letter to a family and saying said you are going to be evicted from your home if your child does not stop um gang related activities would you believe the boy had been dead their son had been dead for over a year but the fact of the matter is it tells us what they're capable of doing and it also tells us that they don't have their records up to date. It also tells us that it can happen to anyone and you won't even know why. If they wrote to you and said, oh, your son is um, involved in related, going related activity and you can be evicted from your home. You're going to think, what gang related activity? It's not like they come and tell you. It's not like they, the police come and say, oh, look, we've got your son on our gang matrix database. I just thought I'd let you know. Oh, no, they don't do that. Youngest is 12 years old on the matrix. 99% are male. Parents no longer have ownership of their children. The law seems to have. Um, is any child picked up and placed on the matrix? Yeah, I was just wondering if, like they said, you know, that boy was outside a home. I'm just wondering, can they pick up any boy and say, okay, you know, find out a little bit about him and then decide to put him on the gang matrix? I mean, I don't even know what the protocol is or if there is one. In 1933, the Children and Young Persons Act imposed a criminal liability for the ill treatment of any child under 16 years old by anyone over 16 years. And yet you still find the police mishandling young children under 16. And I remember watching a video where this boy was saying, I'm under 16, I'm under 16. But the policeman had, their, had his knee in their chest and he was writhing on the floor. What is that about? 
That's what I mean. They make these rules, but they don't follow them. These rules are only for certain people and they can use them at their discretion. What about the guys who burned the police van in Leeds? I wonder if they're on the gang matrix. They definitely should be on there, but I wonder if they are. Well, they wouldn't be, are they? Would they? Because this is a London-based thing. Oh, the world is not fair. Um, according to Amnesty UK director, the police have been setting up false profiles on Facebook and befriending people online to monitor young black boys without needing regulation of Investigatory Power Act warrants. And the Crime and Disorder Act 1998 means they can share this information with goodness knows who. So how do you know if a male member of your family is on the matrix? I'll leave you to answer that question. How do you know what um, if the rejection of your son or your sibling is for jobs and other opportunities is because that they're on the matrix? Why am I sharing this? Really just to raise awareness so that you are aware of what is going on and the systems that pervade our young people's lives. And I'd like to think that you're you might inquire. I don't even know how you would acquire, inquire about something like that. Do you just go up to the police office of the police station and say, look, I'd like to check whether or not my son is on your gang's matrix and what procedure do I need to follow to find that out? There is a multi-agency approach that the police use that involves the skill, skills, employment, housing, job centre, the home office, you know, they're all in collaboration with this. So, um, like I said, they can be removed from the system. Apparently over 70,000 have been removed from the gang matrix. Um, you're automatically removed if you move out of London, but I don't know what the criteria is for removal. I only know that it's difficult. So, um, scored on basis of evidence. That's the red... Um, amber and green. What else is there? Um, a disabled mother um, had her council provided car seized because her son was registered to drive it, even though the son had been arrested and released without charge or any further action. So <sighs> Like I said, the gang matrix does not distinguish between victims and perpetrators of crime. Children as young as 13 are currently on the gang matrix, but as I mentioned there, there's somebody of 12 on it. 80% um, black, 12% other, 8% white on the gang matrix. Uh, predictive policing, like I said, is pre-criminality. They don't, the person doesn't have to have committed a crime. It's whether or not they can predict that they may commit a crime. And that's based on living in deprived areas, that kind of stuff. And it's aimed to, it is aimed at the most vulnerable, you know, the young boys who might just be going to meet a friend, you know, young guys, boys just going to the movies, going bowling, you know, as long as there's more than two of them, you know, they can be picked up and put on that gang matrix if they're not, if they're not careful. So it's not a pretty picture, but I hope you find this information useful and you can do with it whatever you will. Like I said, I'm going to produce links before, which will give you more information about it. I've just kind of covered the surface to give you an idea and so just to give you food for thought. And that's all for now. Bye bye.